Uh, so, so let's talk about the software-defined networking piece next. Uh, so our uh, SDN implementation is based on uh, open source, uh, open virtual network, uh, which underneath uses the open virtual switch. And you can think of this as very similar to VMware's distributed virtual switch, uh, which does packet forwarding. Um, so the, uh, earlier when I was talking about the blueprints, I shared two kind of use cases where you may have an enterprise using a server consolidation or maybe an MSP who is using a multi-tenant blueprint. And uh, specifically, if you're using that kind of environment, uh, you would want to create self-service virtual networks and virtual routers. So we do offer that. And I'll, I'll talk more about some of these other options for east-west versus north-south traffic. What are the deployment options uh, when I get into the demo part? Um, we also have uh, support for some uh, enterprise features like uh, SRIOV for IO virtualization when you require very low latency for your uh, applications. And then uh, we also have IPv6 and dual stack support. Uh, I'll kind of skip through the slides and get to the demo part. Uh, but uh, in, in terms of the uh, networking, security becomes a very important aspect of it uh, for any enterprise customers, right? So we have um, support for security groups where you can filter the virtual machine's traffic based on the source and destination IP addresses or ports. And you can also do it based on certain protocols. So this is more of a L3 and L4 level of uh, fil filtering that happens. So you can do it based on ICMP, TCP, or UDP traffic to, to, to be able to achieve that. And if you have a requirement for uh, a firewall kind of uh, use case where you want to operate at level seven, which is at application layer, then, then you may want certain advanced capabilities. Uh, so these are some of the extensions that we offer as well. Uh, so there is DNS as a service, firewall as a service, load balancer as a service. So um, with the OVN stack, you have some standard implementations available for all of these capabilities. But if you want to work with a specific vendor because you have very um, uh, nuanced uh, requirements on your application, then we also support integrations with third-party vendors. For DNS, you could have Infoblox integration. For Firewall, you could have FortiGate integration. And then similarly, for Load Balancer, F5 is one example. So we, we offer both kind of um, uh, extensions here. Then let's uh, dive into the demo part. Uh, so I have... Um, pre-created certain networks in this case. Uh, so when I showed the blueprint earlier, uh, there was a virtual machine network that was created as a physical network. But then if I want to create virtual networks in a specific tenant, um, this is where I would go ahead and do that. Uh, so I have already pre-created one uh, tenant called QA tenant. And in that, you can see I have a, a VXLAN type of network. Uh, within this, I have created a subnet, given it a CIDR, allocation pool, uh, the standard DHCP and DNS settings. And uh, similarly, I have another tenant here, which is a dev tenant. And in that, you'll notice there's a similar subnet with a different CIDR. And I have um, a subnet created here as well. Uh, to kind of show uh, how you can achieve uh, traffic routing across tenants, there is this virtual router that I can create. Uh, so in this case, I've created one. Uh, and if you look at the interfaces here, I've tried to connect these two tenant networks via a router. So uh, I have the dev and QA networks connected here. And if I want to also associate public IPs with my virtual machines, then in that case, you can also configure an external network here, which will act as the gateway for your north-south traffic. And then going back to uh, the virtual machines view. Uh, can, can I have a question? Uh, sure. Can we have a uh, tenant uh, template? Tenant template? Uh, um, for example, we create a new tenant, right? Mm -hmm. It's another customer on our infrastructure and it's automatically creating firewall, router, you know, like a generic load balancer, or we do it uh, via external automation. Yeah, it, it has to be via external automation today. Thank you. Uh, but there is at least uh, this one thing uh, that you can configure quotas as a, as a default or a global setting so that any new tenant that gets created, you'll have uh, those quotas kind of um, defaulting to the same value for all of them. But in terms of the networking resources, you would want to like have some external automation for that. Uh, so this is the virtual machines page I showed earlier. So in this case, I'm going to 
show uh, virtual machines across different tenants. So as you can see, I have a dev VM that's running in the dev tenant, and then I have another test VM that's running in the QA tenant. Uh, so I can get into the console of one of these VMs and then try to ping the other. Uh, so yeah, if, uh, if you notice the IP address of this uh, dev VM, it is 192.168.51.146. And from that, I'm able to reach the other tenant network via the router interfaces that I showed you earlier. So this is how you can have interconnectivity between the VMs. And um, similarly, if we, I had an external network that I could associate, I can also attach a public IP to this VM and then uh, access it externally as well. So going uh, into the underlay configuration earlier, so I showed you the VXLAN networks that I've already created. So uh, the requirement on the administrator side here is to kind of define a range for the network. So we do support three types of underlays. One is VLAN-based underlays, and then we also offer VXLAN and Geneve overlay networks for with OVN. Uh, one use case here might be because with VLANs, you're limited to 4096 networks. If you want to have more of those, then you would opt for either VXLAN or Geneve networks in that case. And once this blueprint is set up, then you are kind of you can allow any self-service user to come in and create those virtual networks that I showed you earlier. Is, is there a cross-reference between uh, these that you're connecting here and the Kubernetes networks that you're creating when you do the cluster, or is that an individual CNI that you're going to be using for your Kubernetes clusters? Uh, so it is going to be an individual uh, CNI for now, but uh, we are looking at uh, options where we have to kind of have like a common network across the virtual machines and any containerized applications that you're running. Uh, so that way you can have cross traffic between the two environments as well. Thank you. Uh, do you so have any uh, edge cluster? Edge cluster to interconnect it with the uh, VLAN. So for example, we have a standard uh, network and we have TAP interfaces that connect segments of Farix LAN or Genève to the physical network, you know, like you do you do it on entire, let's say, infrastructure, or you or we can uh, point to the some edge cluster like it's like it's in VMware, for example. Uh, like you are trying to get the traffic internal into the cluster, which is let's say based upon VXLAN, and then move it out. Through the it, overlay to, to a VLAN yeah, yeah, yeah. based network. Yes, you you can do that with. Uh, and with the, some of the be, is uh, all of those routers will sit on the specific cluster, or I can you know like link the, <laughs> the specific cluster. Both of them are possible. Around. Both of them are possible. So we have some customer who want a really flat kind of distribution of the routers on mm -hmm. any one of the servers, and there are some customers who want it only on. Hey, I have these five servers which are dedicated for my north and south, so the virtual router should only live on that. So you can do either one of those. Yeah, I was just gonna show that. So in addition to the virtual networking, if you notice here, we have this option called enable distributed virtual routing. So if you want to have centralized uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, routing for your north-south traffic, you could opt for disabling this option so that you have one uh, node as the gateway chassis and any external traffic uh, for SNAD goes only via that node. And this may be also a use case for somebody who wants to have like a firewall at your network perimeter instead of just enforcing it via security groups at, at a VM level. Okay. Um, so yeah, we do offer both kind of options here. Uh, then I, I also wanted to kind of show, uh, we looked at routers and floating IPs and then security groups is uh, where uh, I mentioned earlier that you can configure different uh, outbound and inbound rules, uh, and uh, this could be done based on a specific protocol. Uh, you can have um, TCP, UDP, ICMP filters, or you can do all traffic if you want to allow all, all the traffic for that VM. Uh, the same goes for, for the inbound traffic as well. So you can configure all of these and then associate the security group with the VM. In this case, I have three uh, security groups. One is default, which allows all outbound but no inbound. Then I have one that is only allowing you to uh, connect into a VM on port 22 with SSH. And then there's one that is allow all. So you could create different security groups and um, 
if you want more advanced capabilities, then you would set up a firewall as well in that case. Uh, so, so yeah, the advanced capabilities that I talked about earlier, those are still work in progress, so we don't have that as part of the demo currently. Uh, but I'll... So real quickly, I see, so security groups, um, great. Is, and I apologize if I missed it, was, was there a, a setting that you could put on your networks for like north-south uh, segregation as well as east-west? Uh, so uh, all east-west traffic is basically uh, limited to that tenant network, right? But if only if you attach it to a router, then if you have an external interface connected to that router, you would get access to north-south traffic. But okay. otherwise, it will be isolated to that tenant. But you have basic like ACLs that you can uh, attribute to that router for those types of situations? Uh, yeah, you can also configure RPAC at the neutron, uh, like the networking layer, so that it, it allows you to set up those policies. Okay, thank you. 